Okay, we're going to look now at graphing our trig functions, our sine and cos curves. And um, just to get things going here, I'm going to draw on some uh, just, just some things that we've already talked about and, and, and arrived at in class in terms of the unit circle here. So let me just take you on a little tour of what I've got on the screen at the moment. I've got the unit circle in green there. I've got the x and y coordinates on the screen of, of this point A. Okay, really important because the x and y coordinates, as you know, match up to cos and sine of the angle here BCA. Now the angle BCA is, is on your screen, 1.13 radians right there. Okay, so it's cos of 1.13 is going to be is going to match up to 0.43 and sine of 1.13 is going to match to 0.9. So what I want to do is I want to now plot those points. So on the horizontal axis I've got my angle measurement. Okay, um, and on the vertical axis I've got for cos the x coordinate of the point A, and for sine, I've got the y coordinate of point A. All right, so hopefully that's okay. And what I'm going to do is, as we move A around, we're going to obviously the x and y coordinates are changing, and cos is tracking the x coordinate of A, and sine is tracking the y coordinate of A, and they're moving because on the horizontal axis. Um, we've got uh, the, we're, 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 the horizontal axis matches the angle that's being made here at the center, BCA. So to, to just explain the point that's currently on your screen, uh, 1.37 on the horizontal, so on my x-axis, 1.37, and for my cos point, 0.2. So 1.37, 0.2, there it is. And my sine point is 1.37 for, uh, for my horizontal component of my coordinate and the y coordinate of a 0.98 is the y coordinate of that sine point. Okay, so as a moves around, you can see that what's happening here is um, is that that continues to track. So that's what I've asked this that's what I've asked this uh, these points to do is to obey that rule. Okay, so I've opened up my my uh, angle is now 2.45 radians. So that's where my point is on the x-axis, 2.45. You can see that matches up. These two obviously vertically in line. And my sine point, have a look at that. It, it's horizontally aligned, isn't it, to this point A because it's tracking the y-coordinate of A, whereas my x-coordinate of A is being tracked here with the blue point. Okay, let's keep going. So as we move around, we're in radians because it makes sense to graph in radians because radians, uh, pi radians, which is where we are at the moment, is 180 degrees. If I if I if I had this in in degrees, I'd have to have a I'd have to be on 180 now on the on the x-axis. So my scale would be horrible. So radians are, are being used, but also what I need to let you know is once we get to this point here, it flips into a negative angle. So we're now measuring as a negative angle, but B C A around this way, we've gone into the negative. Uh, so in quadrants three and four, this measurement here is as a negative angle. That's okay. What we're going to do is keep going around the circle. So that we get one complete cycle in place, and that's called the period of the curve. All right there we go, it's matched up. Okay, so that is as A moves around the circle, that's just going to continue uh, to move around in in that in that formation. Um, and so what we what we develop from that are the sine and cos curves. So just let that run through, fill up a few of those gaps, enjoy the uh, enjoy the flow of this uh, this animation just for a second. Okay, so there we, there we have it. We've got um, the the sine and cos curves. So now I'm going to go in and have a look at some variations on those. So what I've got on the screen at the moment, what I might do, I've got the sine curve on the screen at the moment, um, and what we might do is just take that back to just the regular sine x curve. Now, it, at the, you can see it goes on forever. It's an infinite curve. It's uh, hemmed in by the range 1 to minus 1. And one, what we need to examine are just a couple of features of this curve, uh, of, this, of, this, of this graph. Okay, I'm bringing this n value right back to value of 1. Okay, there we go. So at the moment, what you've got on your screen is y equals sine x. And it's that sine wave that, uh, that goes on and on forever in both directions. If we have just look at one complete cycle, what we normally do is just have a look at this section of it here, between naught and 2 pi or Norton 360. There it is there. Um, and its altitude is defined as this distance here from the midline of the 
uh, of, the, of the curve. So the midline is, is what runs right through the, the centre, halfway between the, the max and min points. So from the midline up to a maximum point, that's called your altitude. Now at the moment that's 1, but if I want to have a look at changing this value of A, so what I'm going to do is now graph Y equals um, 2 sine X. By increasing that value of A, you can see what's happening here. It's at 1.34, and my altitude is changing as a result. So right, we get, get right up there to 2, and so you can see at Y equals 2 sine X, my altitude there is 2. Uh, you can see there it is there. It goes right up to 2 here on the, on the Y axis, and down to minus 2 here. So it just increases, um, and it will continue to do so. All right, now what happens to, so that's a fairly straightforward, just a, just a, a vertical stretch, and um, A will just dictate what our altitude is. Now if we go and have a look at what happens when we, when we change N around. So this value of N is what's, uh, what's in here as a, as a multiple of X. When you take sine, at the moment it's just sine X. But what about when we make it sine 2X? Well, let's have a look at the, the, the result of that. And we get this... Um, we get this horizontal compression, squeezes the thing up, and if we make that two, let's just have a look. And what I want you to have a look at and concentrate on here is how the period has changed. It was the period, one complete cycle, went to two pi before now goes to pi. So what happened there? It, it got halved because that's uh, because because n equals two, it got halved. So our period get, turns out to be two pi or 360 divided by that value of n. Let's just see it move a little bit more. Now, if we take it up to n equals 3 um, and n equals 4, we'll see see how it all jams up. We'll go up to 4. That should give us 3, 6, 7, 4. It should be a 90-degree period or a pi over 2 period. Uh, so, oh, I've gone too far. There we go. Bring it back. So, this is a pi over 2 period. Let's have a look. It goes through one complete cycle. Boom. There. It goes through two complete cycles by pi. So, pi over 2 is our period there. Where it's exactly the same for cos. So if I change this around and we edit that function and we say not sine anymore, we're going to call that we're going to call that cos. Okay, we're going to call that um, let's get cos in there. Um, hit enter. Okay, it's exactly the same result. So as we change the period is still pi on 2. So you can see here, one complete cycle goes to pi on 2. Um, and as n changes, we're going to see that back off. And we'll take it right back to n equals 1, which will give us a 2 pi. So what you'll see is that one complete cycle will stretch all the way out to 2 pi as n gets back to 1. Here it goes. So we should... Here we go, get there pretty pretty soon. Back to one. Now, okay, so one complete cycle for our cos curve is this sort of inverted bell shape all the way to there. Um, and as A as A moves around, we'll see our altitude again move. So 1.4, 1.5, take it up to 2 and see the outcome of that. There we go. So there's y equals 2 cos x at the moment. Um, and then just a reminder what happens here, let's go the other way. Uh, so let's take n down and that'll stretch it out. So if you take n to a half, what we end up with is 2 pi, with, with a period of 2 pi over a half, which is actually 4 pi. So if we just have a look there, we'll take this so you can see that one, one complete cycle of this, of this curve, which just repeats forever and ever, goes out to 4 pi, so our period there is 4 pi. Okay, so let's just go back to our notes, um, which are here. Okay, so let's, let's take down these notes, sine and cosine curves, um, y equals a sine nt, so our amplitude is a, as we talked about, and our period is 2 pi over n, and we just had just a couple of examples here. When you're asked to sketch 2 cos 2x, what we've got to note is that we've got uh, two, 2 is our amplitude, so we take, it's a cos curve, so it's got this, this bell sort of shape to it. Um, two, so our, so our, on our y-axis we've got to go up to 2 and minus 2, and then we've got this bell shape, but our period is 2 pi over 2. Okay, so 2 pi over 2, 
or pi is our period. So one complete cycle goes through pi. If we were to go out to two pi, we'd just do another one of them. Um, y, go down to y equals a half sine x over 2. So this is my sine curve here. Um, one half tells me that I'm only going up to a half on my amplitude, and down to minus a half here. And x over 2 tells me that 2 pi over a half, or 4 pi, is my period. So in one complete cycle, I get out from, from 0 to 4 pi on the x-axis. Okay, in exercise 16G, we'll have some more practice at that. So um, we'll get stuck into that when, when we next meet in class. Cheers.